How's it going everyone? This is Anthony from Om Nom Nom and World Work for Rice and uh, from My Anime Podcast as well. Part of lots of things. Um, I'm here to do the Saber Pulse tutorial I was supposed to finish five years ago, five plus years ago. Um, since then, made some upgrades. We're using OBS Studio. We're using a GameCube with a Game Boy Player. Uh, I am using a wireless Super Nintendo controller to make this work. Um, I, I have a green screen. We're doing the whole tutorial today. Okay. Alright, so this is the uh, Saber Pulse LSDJ tutorial. LSDJ is a music uh, making program designed for the Game Boy. And it was, uh, as Johan made the program and he programmed everything in C, I believe. Um, regardless, um, it, it is a little sound DJ. And Saber Pulse, who is a chiptune artist, uh, made a tutorial about the basics of LSDJ and how to um, start out. So I'll be reading from his tutorial. And yeah, let's get to it. Here is a tutorial for people who want to learn how to make music using LSDJ and have either very basic or no musical knowledge. I hope this basic guide helps people as throughout learning the program, I trawled the internet for different explanations and tutorials. Another one can't be a bad thing. As in another tutorial out there, wouldn't be a bad thing. Uh, quick side note, this um, tutorial was originally posted on 8-Bit Collective. 8-Bit Collective went, the forums went dark uh, December 2011. So uh, yeah, someone actually copied all this and like got it onto another website. So a uh, big shout out to whoever was able to do that. Okay. All right. Um, back to Saber Pulse. I have previous digital music call knowledge of programs such as Ableton Live, Cubase, and Fru Fr Fruity Loop, Fruity Loops, Fruity Loop Studio. I never use Fruity Loops. Okay. And I also have a working understanding of chords, scales, and musical notation which comes in super handy. Um, it's not essential that you know any of these things or have previous experience in music. Everyone has to start somewhere, right? But it has certainly helped me. My advice would be to give LSDJ a try, and if you find it too difficult, try learning the basics on computer software with an easier graphical interface. This isn't a guide to every nook and cranny that LSDJ has to offer. The manual and wiki on the official website harbor a mass of information that I couldn't possibly hope to include in a newbie guide. Instead, what I'm going to do is run you through how to create a small song, the information and knowledge you take from that should hopefully set you on your way to creating bigger and better things. All right. Contents of this tutorial include part one, which is starting out, part two, bass, part three, lead melody, part four, kick drum, and part five, percussion, which include the snare drum and hi-hats. Okay, starting out. The first screen you will see after the Nintendo logo passes will be the song screen. So so how we know we're in the song screen is that in the upper left hand corner we have song and in the bottom right hand corner with all those uh, lettering, uh, letters, the, the letters in a very phallic shape, we're on, we're highlighting the S of that, okay? So here we go. The basic structure of LSDJ. In the song screen, in the song screen, <laughs> um, 
you place numbered blocks called chains. Inside these chain blocks, you create numbered blocks called phrases. Inside phrases, you place musical notes, which tell the program what to play. Inside each phrase, you are able to create instruments, which tell each of the notes what to sound like. From the song screen, hold the select button and press up. This will navigate to the options menu. Okay, so we're holding down select and we're pressing up. This is the options menu. Uh, here you will be able to change many global parameters which affect your song and even the whole program. Highlight the tempo field with the control pad, hold A and press up, down, left or right to experiment with changing the tempo of the song. The tempo is the speed at which your entire song is played. It is measured in beats per minute or BPM. Let's change the tempo to 140. Okay, I'm going to be holding A on my controller and then I'm going to be pressing right until I get to 140. Now, the number changed. I don't know if it was from this or that, but um, you can actually tap tempo. So if you tap really fast, <laughs> you get a high tempo number. If you tap really slow, you get a slower tempo. So that's one way to do it. It's like another, it's like a, I don't know if like everyone knows about that, but that's a feature in LSDJ. All right, so we're just gonna uh, hold down the A button, press up, and we should get to 140. You could press up to skip by tens, and then uh, you can press right to go up by single digits and left to go down by single digits. So in the tutorial, Saber Pulse, uh, he's showing you uh, this first to give you a taste of how most parameter fields in LSDJ are altered by holding A and using the control pad. Once you've changed the tempo, hold select and push down to return to the song screen. Boom. All right, we are on to our next section, bass. First, we'll start with a simple bass line. In Pulse 1, or the Pulse 1 channel, which on the screen, there are four um, channels. We have Pulse 1, Pulse 2, wave channel and noise channel. Pulse 1 has sweep functionality to it. Pulse 2 does not have sweep functionality to it. The wave channel, you want to make bass in this one, but for the tutorial, it's, it's using the pulse channels to do that. And then noise is white noise. Uh, so there we go. The wave channel also supports samples. How audio works on a Game Boy, is that the Game Boy does not have a dedicated audio chip. What happens is that the sounds are generated from the CPU of the Game Boy. And it has four audio channels, Pulse 1, Pulse 2, Wave, and Noise Channel. All right, in channel Pulse 1, highlight the first top left cell by using the control pad, then double tap A. This creates a new chain. Now you should see chain 01 in the cell you selected. So I will press A and I already made a couple of cells by accident, but we're going to be holding A, pressing left to make it 01, chain 01. Now you want to go to the chain screen, hold select and press right on the D-pad. So I'm holding select and I'm pressing right. There we go, okay. Uh, so on the bottom right hand corner, you see that we scooted from S and now we're over to C. In the chain screen, you want to create a phrase. Do this by double tapping A on the first cells at the top. For the sake of this tutorial, I will assume you have created phrase 01. So I'm going to press A and then I'm going to press right on the D-pad 
to change it from 00, zero to zero 01. Now, we don't necessarily need to have 01 to 01. It could be whatever numbers available in LSDJ. I think it counts in like hexadecimal. So it goes from 0 to 9 and then A to F and then back to 0. So it, it has its own counting parameters. But this is the phrase number 01. And this is the chain number 01, which are not the same thing. Phrase 01 just happens to be in chain 01. And it doesn't have to be the same number, if that makes any sense. Now we need to make the baseline still in the chain screen, or while in the chain screen, highlight phrase 01, which we have already and hold the select button and press right on the d-pad here we go this will take you to the phrase screen for phrase zero one enter the following notes so it goes from zero to nine and then a to f there we go <laughs> so what saber pulse is putting in for the tutorial is that we slide down to uh two and we put in C3. So I just pressed, I went down, and then I pressed A, and C3 magically appeared. Okay, now going down to six, we do the same thing. We go down and we press A, gives us a C, and then we go down to A, and press A, gives us a C3, and then we're gonna go down to E, do the same thing. If you press play, which is a start button, you will hear the Game Boy burst into life. That's life. This is what life sounds like. It's not much, and certainly not a baseline, but it's a start. We need to go back and create three more phrases in Chain 1. If you think about it, most dance or pop music travels in the 4x4 four four timing, which some people affectionately know it as 4 to the floor. That's what we're aiming for here to get you familiar with the program. To go back to the chain screen, press and hold the select button and tap left on your d-pad. Boom, we're back out into the chain screen for the phrases. Now, instead of having to create three new phrases go into them and place the notes for each again we're going to make it easier and faster for you we're going to take our existing baseline section phrase 01 and clone it three times so that we're able to edit each one without affecting each other in chain 01 place three more phrase zero ones below the one you already have there. So go down, press A, go down, press A, go down, press A. So we have four zero one phrases in the chain screen because it starts at zero. So we're on line three. There we go. Now cloning is a very important tool in little sound dj if you use little sound dj you are going to be cloning now there's a deep clone and there's another type of clone short clone i don't know i've never had to use that but i've always used deep clone so what it does is it takes whatever you put in in the phrase or the notes you inputted into that phrase and it will assign it a different number and you can change that as much as you want and it will not affect the original one. To clone, highlight the second phrase 01. So here's the first one, this is the second one. Hold select, then press B, then press A. The phrase number will change uh, to one you previously have not used. Do this for the remaining two below. If I hold select for too long, due to how this controller is set up, 
select is part of like the Bluetooth connectivity deal. So I shouldn't hold select for too long. Okay, so back to it. We're going to be going down to the third zero one, the third zero one. We're gonna hold select and press B and then press A. There we go, go down, hold select, press B, press A. So we have 01, 02, 03, 04. And they all have the same notes in the same placement, and it's all good. Now in chain 01, you should see four different phrase numbers. So 01, 02, 03, 04. If you look in the phrase screens for each, you will see that they're exactly the same as each other. They all have the notes you place inside for the first one. But because they now have different phrase numbers, you are able to edit each one independently of each other. Changing each phrase will not change another. This technique is the backbone for working quickly and efficiently in LSDJ, so it's handy to learn right away. You could make a song in LSDJ, by placing each and every note individually, but that will take a while. So with this cloning system in place, um, it helps speed up the process of making songs. And there actually is like a copy and paste function. I don't know if, if uh, Saber Pulse gets into it in here, but you'll be able to find out how to do that on the internet somewhere. I'll probably make a video about it. Okay, the next step is to edit the notes for each new phrase to round off our baseline. The first one contains all C notes. Make the second one contain E notes. Make the third one contain A notes and the fourth to contain B notes. For the sake of this tutorial, we'll keep it as simple as possible. Go back to the chain screen and press start. You will see your phrases playing in progression with a small black arrow pointing to which phrase is currently playing. This will loop until you press start again. So we're in chain 01. We've highlighted phrase 01 and I'm about to press start. So it keeps looping and this little arrow kind of drops down. And to stop, you press start again. I'm back. Apologies for any continuity errors. Errors? Errors? Er errors? Um, I went ahead and dropped a controller. I went ahead and just got a wired SNES controller versus the, the wireless one because holding select causes issues and holding select is something you need to do in LSDJ. So I'm using a wired SNES controller now. Anywho, um, getting back to this, what Saber Pulse wants us to do is individually to go into each phrase and to change the C note into an E note or, and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm holding the A button and I'm pressing right. Yeah. And then this goes through the scale um, the notes, scales, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm using the correct terminology here. Holding A, pressing right until we hit E. All of these are E, E notes with, uh, in the, in the third octave. Do you say in, in the numbered octave? Is that, is that how you say it? I'm not, I'm not music savvy here. Okay. We jump back out to the chain screen by holding select and pressing left. We're going down and we're highlighting 03 and we're holding select and pressing right and we're getting into here. Now Saber Pulse tells us to drop some B notes in here. Okay, so we're gonna go to the right until we hit B. Okay. All I'm doing, navigating with the D-pad and then to change a parameter, I'm holding A and I'm pressing the D-pad and changing the notes. So beautiful. Okay, holding select, pressing left to get out. I wanna show you guys a different way how to do this. 
So let's say we're in the phrase screen. What you could do is you could hold B and press down. And that takes you to the next phrase down, but it has to be connected. There can't be any gaps, like an empty space in the chain block. It has to be consecutive, like how all four of our phrases are like continuing from each other in that loop. That's the only way this works. So yeah, anywho. Oh, we're supposed to make A notes first. So my bad, A and then B. Okay, so I'm holding B and then I'm pressing down and then we're for, to phrase zero, 04. And then once it get us to B3. So holding A, pressing right until we get B3. Holding A, pressing right. Holding A, pressing right. Okay, now we can play uh, what this sounds like. So I'm gonna highlight zero one. I'm gonna press start, which is our play button. Now you're cooking with fire. So you can hear the bass line progressing and at least you can hear something remotely musical. What we'd really like to do now is give that bass line more bass. Navigate to the phrase screen for your first phrase. So it should be phrase 01. We hold down select, we press right. We're in phrase 01 where we can place the notes. So we have this column here, which is notes. Next column over are instruments. And the next column over are commands. So Saber Pulse is talking about the instrument column. Next to each note, you will see an instrument number. The default instrument number is 00. zero. Highlight this number, any will do, and select the instrument screen by using the same method as you did with the previous screen. Hold the select button and press right. So I'm going to go to this zero zero on the instrument column and I'm holding select and I'm pressing right. This is the instrument screen. This is where you can control the parameters of the notes that are being played. The first thing you should do to avoid later confusion is to name your instrument. You just highlight the name box and it'll bring up an alphabet for you to choose from. As we're creating a bass line here, let's call it bass. So we can use the D-pad, go up and down, but we're gonna go into name, we're gonna press A, and then here pops up this little sort of uh, little alphabet. And uh, we get a cool little lightning bolt here, if you want, B-A-S-S. -S. So I'm using an older version of LSDJ because I enjoy how the instruments work, how the commands work, how the how each channel sounds. Now with newer versions of LSDJ, it's essentially recoded. And due to the recoding in terms of like adding functionality or taking functionality away, sometimes it makes instruments that you made before sound different. And if you talk to some old heads that use LSDJ, some of them are using even older versions of LSDJ that I'm using right now. Once we're done naming our instrument, we press OK. So we only have five character spaces to name an instrument, so name them well. Press play to hear your phrase in the background, or if you wish, hold select and press start to hear your entire song in the background while you're editing the sound of the instrument. This is handy as you can hear what you're changing in real time. So what Saber Pulse is saying here is if you want to kind of mess around and see what the instrument tuning does to the instrument, you can just press the play button and then it'll loop the phrases 
and you can start adjusting things on the fly and you'll hear them in real time what it's doing. So I'm gonna press play. Oh, I guess it's only this first phrase. Uh, that doesn't sound very pretty, so I'll go to the next part and then we'll go from there, eh? Next, we wanna edit the envelope field. If you have very basic or no understanding of this, it's where you can control the ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, and release. So ADSR is something I feel like people that are getting into music, they should look up what it means and like how it works and what the different parts are, like what attack does, what decay does, what sustain does, what release does. There are countless explanations of this on the net. Read up and do your homework. Uh, by default, the envelope is set to A9. Uh, we're in the envelope select deal. It starts at A8 because of this version of LSDJ. So there's a typo in here. It says hold select and press up. You hold A and press up. So um, this will max out at F and F is the loudest it will get in terms of the attack of the sound. Now it can go all the way down to zero, which means it doesn't have, there's no sound at all. Let's uh, bring it back to A and then I will press and hold A and then I will press up. Or I'll press A and press up and down. So as you can see, with this uh, first sort of uh, number slash digit, that controls volume. All right. Uh, if you change the nine down to one, you will hear the instrument get shorter. Okay. Next up, he wants us to shorten the length of the note. Okay. So essentially, what this is holding A, pressing up and down. If you press up and down, that controls volume. Left and right will control um, the length of the note, how long the note sound is played before it cuts out. So Saber Pulse wants us to put in D4, so it'll be a loud and short sound. Pressing A, pressing up till we hit D and then pressing left until we hit three. So it's a shorter, shorter sort of deal. Go all the way down to one. And it's super short there, but he wants us to set a D3. The next thing we need to edit is the wave duty cycle of the instrument. That's the little graphic image of wave directly underneath the envelope field so it's here now this wave duty cycle is not to be confused with the wave channel the wave channel is an entire channel the wave duty cycle is for pulse instruments uh, at least in this case with lsdj so if we hold a and we press the d-pad left and right we could change the length of the uh, wave duty cycle. And what that does is it just spreads out how a square wave goes, like how, how long it, before it goes up and down sort of deal and uh, inverts and does all that cool stuff. There are only four positions it can be changed to. Far left is 12.5%. The next one is 25%. The next one which is in the middle is 50%. Far right is 75%. Hold A on the field and push right or left to switch between the four settings. If your baseline is playing in the background, you will be able to hear the cycle being changed. The middle setting 50% has a good low bassy sound. So choose that for now. So we're going to start out as before with our skinny 7.5% wave duty cycle. Now highlighting the wave duty cycle, I'm going to hold A and press right on the D-pad. Okay. 
Okay, so our wave duty cycle is set to 50%, and it gives us a fuller sound. That's how I like to describe it. And definitely more bassy than at 7.5% where it had a thinner sound. Play around in the instrument field if you like to hear what different things can affect your pulse instrument. Once you've done this, the first baseline section of your track is complete. Navigate back to the song screen, hold select and tap left until you get to the song screen. So here we go. Okay, back out to the song screen. And he wants to recap what we've done so far. And what we have done so far is that we have a chain in our song screen. It contains four different phrases and each contain musical notes that determine our baseline in this uh, instance. Uh, you have edited one instrument, which is assigned to each of the notes in your phrase. Okay, so our next section will be lead melody. It says here in channel pulse two, create a new chain by double tapping A. Now I've double tapped A way too many times, so numbers are gonna get wild and crazy, but we're gonna set with zero two. Uh, navigate to the chain screen, which I'm holding the select button, pressing right. We're in the chain screen and create a new phrase. So I will press A twice and it gets us to zero five. Now, in the previous chain, our phrase went from zero one to zero four. Now we're doing zero five here. So this is a fresh, brand new phrase. Inside this phrase, enter a note, then immediately create a new instrument for it. As the instrument you used inside this phrase, enter a note, then immediately create a new instrument for it. As the instrument you used before was zero zero by default, and you don't want the lead melody instrument to sound like the baseline instrument. Let's make this instrument zero one. So I'm gonna press and hold select and press right. And I'm going to put a note on line zero. Okay, so I lay down the note and I'm gonna go over to instrument and this instrument is zero zero. If we press and hold select and press right, uh, it takes us to that instrument and this is the instrument we made for the bass line. Now, Saber Pulse essentially just told us like, hey, you don't wanna be using this, so you want a new instrument. So what you do is uh, press A twice here. There we go, yeah and it changed from zero, zero to zero, 01. We will need to enter notes for the lead melody, so let's do something simple. So he wants us on line zero to have a C6. And to do that, I have to hold A and press up and down to change the octave. And then if I wanna change the notes, I have to press left or right. Okay, so line two, he wants E6 in there. There we go. Line four, C6. Line six, F6. Line eight, a C6. And line A, a D6. Line E, and A6. With line C being C6. Okay. Each of these notes should have instrument zero one in the column next to them. So if we look at the notes and then we look at the column, the next column over the instrument column, they all say zero one. So it's safe to say that these are, that these notes are for a brand new instrument and 
they will not clash with the settings we have for our instrument 00, which is our bass instrument. Go inside the instrument screen for instrument 01. So we're going to highlight any of these 01s and it'll do it for every 01 instrument. So we're going to hold down select and press right. Okay. We're going to name this instrument lead one. So we highlight this name section, we press A, and then we go and drop in with an L E A D numero uno lead one, baby. That's how we do it. Uh, and edit the parameters like before until you hear something you like. I'll choose envelope C2. So going down to envelope, pressing A, holding A, go up to C and then pressing and holding A, going left, we're gonna go to two, so C2. And a wave duty cycle of 25%. So our initial starting point is 7.5. We'll be holding A and then tapping right one time. There we go, that's 25%. After you've done this, head back to the phrase screen uh, for this melody. So I'm gonna press and hold select and then press left uh, the next thing we're going to change is the command column on the far right so three in the phrase screen three columns notes instruments commands okay so the command column this is where you start making your melodies really interesting and giving them a bit of depth. Like anything in LSDJ, it's really worth going through the manual thoroughly and doing your homework on what each command can do. So um, as long as you legally obtained your version of LSDJ or your access to LSDJ, um, you'll also have access to the instruction manual or the how-to guide and it'll talk about each command and each function and what they do. Now, over time, in terms of like 2011 till now, some of those commands kind of changed a little bit. So for whatever version of LSDJ you're running, look at the notes or look at the manual for that version of LSDJ. Uh, because some commands might be different, some command parameters might be uh, different than otherwise stated. Okay, so for this example, we're going to add two different commands to our melody. Go to row zero and highlight the first command box. Press A and it'll give you the command A straight away. So if I press A, it gives us A. We don't want this one, so hold A and press right until you get to C. So it goes A, C, D, E, G, H, K. Um, it's not A, B, C, D, E, F, G, that sort of thing. Um, each one has its own sort of uh, thing of what it does. Uh, this is the chord command. Now, highlight the box to the right of it, which are the, the two digits or the two sort of um, digit placements, I guess, number placements, what have you. This is where you will alter what each command does. Zero, 00 won't do anything on this command. So let's try zero, 07. So I'm going to hold A and tap right until we get to 7. Great. Hit select and start to hear the melody with this new command in place. You'll hear the first note is now magically transformed into a chord. Try doing this to a couple more notes in your melody. So select and start. This sounds better than when I <laughs> did my first LSDJ tutorial, so yosh, okay. All right, the second command we're gonna try is the O command. Uh, this can cause the notes in your melody to be played through either the left or right speaker, uh, which is called panning. So in LSDJ, it does hard panning. It doesn't, there's no sweep of the panning from left to right. It's just straight up 
it's either going to be coming out of both left and right speakers or headphones or whatever you have in stereo mode or it'll come out on the left side only or the right side only there are four states you can assign to the O command on rows 1, 5, 9, and D in your phrase assign the O command and so on and so forth so I'm gonna go to row 1 which does not have an instrument there I'm gonna go and highlight this command column I'm gonna hold A and press right until we hit O alright so wants us to do this for rows 1, 5, 9, and D so 1, 5, 9 and D. So there are four states you can assign to the O command. L, which will be left, there will be uh, R for right, LR for left and right, or nothing selected, which essentially turns both channels off so you get no sound coming through on that command. Assign the O command to L on rows 3 seven and B. So we're gonna hold A and use the D-pad and press left and that magically gives us left. Okay now he wants us on rows three seven B and F three seven B and F we're going to hard pan to the right and go into like the value I'll call them the, val the value column for the command. We're going to press and hold A and then we're going to tap right. There we go. There we go. There we go. And there we go. So here, L, R, L, R, L, R. So it's going to be swapping back and forth. Okay. Play your melody and you will hear that after each note, this channel is panned to either left or right. In this example, we have panned the melody in the spaces between the notes. I tend to find this gives a better stereo effect than placing the pan on the rows where each note is. Also, this gives you room to place commands, like the chord command uh, we used on row zero, on rows with the notes themselves. So what Saber Pulse is saying is on our note we put a C command, a chord command for it. And in a place where there is no note placed, we put a pan command in it. Now, as far as I know, and as far as uh, I'm concerned with LSDJ, you can only use one command per line. Like there's the command here, but there's no more columns for extra commands we can put. So we're not able to layer commands in a pulse channel in terms of having multiple commands on a single note or a single row. All right, let's see how this sounds. So I'm gonna press and hold select and then press start to play the song oh man that's good that's some good stuff now if you listen to some roboctopus stuff that stuff is sick okay that's it for the lead melody for now try experimenting with different commands and their parameters to try and make it sound more interesting Navigate from the phrase screen back to the chain screen and enter your phrase in the top four rows. If you want to change your lead melody even more, remember the cloning feature and use this to create new phrases. So we're going to back out. We're going to hold, uh, press and hold select, press left on the D-pad. And we're going to make four phrases in the chain screen, and they're all going to be the same. When you're done, head back to the song screen and press start. The song screen will now play both your chains 
bass and lead melody together for the first time. The four phrases in your bass line and the four phrases in your lead melody will play alongside each other and then loop back to the first phrase in each. So what this is saying is if we go to pulse one and we go into the chain screen, we have four phrases. They go to row four. We back out to the song screen, go to pulse two, we go in. We also have four rows. And because they're both the same length in terms of like, there's four rows here, there's four rows here. When it gets to the bottom, it'll just start back up at the very top and loop. So we can see this very easily if we pre press play and then go into the chain screen. So yeah, so here we go. We're gonna press and hold select and then we're going to press right. Yeah, so it goes, it loops through. And since we have four phrases in pulse one and we have four phrases in pulse two, they hit at the same time. Like they're timed with each other. Now, if you have some weird stuff going on, like there's only two phrases in one and like five phrases in the other, then you'll start getting this these weird sort of effects going on in terms of like this phrase will end before these phrases are done. And some LSDJ chiptune artists use that in very creative ways. So it's all up to your creativity and it's all up to your style, so to speak. If something sounds out of tune, go into the phrase where you think the problem is and alter it until it sounds right to you. Okay, next we're gonna go and make a kick drum there are sample drum kits available in the wave channel for you to use in my opinion the kick drums on these kits are really weak and not very loud the first big problem i was confronted with in lsdj was how to make a really loud kick drum that you hear in a great deal of contemporary chiptune the answer is to forget about the wave channel for sample drums and create an analog kick drum using a pulse channel. Right now, you're probably screaming, uh, but how? I'm already using both of those channels for my bass line and lead melody. Or, how the heck do I create a drum from a pulse instrument? It's really easy. In your pulse one channel, your bass line notes in each of the four phrases are only assigned to rows 2, 6, A, and E. What we're going to do is create a simple pulse channel instrument that sounds like a kick drum, and we're going to place it in rows 0, 4, 8, and C. Simply put, it'll sound like kick bass, kick bass, kick bass, kick bass. First, go inside the first phrase of your baseline chain, create a new instrument, and place it on rows 0, 4, 8, and C, making sure that the note you place is always C5. So, highlighting chain 0, 1 on the song screen for pulse 1, and then we're going to go deeper into the matrix or deeper, it's like, what? what is it? The Matrix, Inception, it's all the same thing, right? Um, so we're going to be affecting rows 0, 4, 8, and C. All right, cool. So we're going to make it C5. But we need to change the instrument number. So instrument number 0, 0 and 0, 1 are already taken up by our bass and our lead melody. So the next logical solution would be zero two. Okay, first let's place these down. So four, eight, and C. Okay, we're gonna go inside and we're gonna adjust the instrument parameters. So highlighting our instrument zero two, we're gonna press and hold select, and then we're gonna press right. Now, we're inside instrument 02, which will be used 
for our kick drum. Make sure it is a pulse instrument and name it kick. So the type of instrument, it is a pulse instrument, name it. We're gonna name it kick. K. Give me an I. Give me a C. Give me a K. Now what does that spell? That spells punch. Set the envelope to F1 so it'll be like, it'll be as loud as it can be in terms of a pulse instrument with initial attack and it'll have the shortest length. Press and hold A and then press up until you hit F and then press and hold A and tap left until we get to 1. Okay. Set the wave duty cycle to 50%. So go down to the wave duty cycle and press and hold A and then tap right twice to get it to 50%. Go to the bottom of the screen and set the table to zero, zero. Just hold A and press right. So we're gonna go down to table. We're gonna press and hold A and then press right or left to get to zero zero what have you now to navigate to the table screen as you do with other screens by holding select and pressing right as this is a simple tutorial i'm not going to go into any detail with regards to tables right now but this technique should give you a tiny taster of what tables are able to do so we're going to press and hold select press right we are now in the glorious table screen where magic happens. In the table screen, you will see a lot of columns. Volume, uh, TSP, which is transpose. We have command, we have dual commands for this table. So this is where you get dual commands, folks. We're gonna go to the top and to the far right and use the command column and choose command P and then we are going to set the value to F1. Which sounds kind of weird because P is for pitch. This is the pitch command and what we are doing is pitching the pulse instrument right down to give it a punchy kick drum sound. If you press start to preview what you've done, you'll hear the kick coming right before each of your bass notes. So we'll press start. Oh man, this is great. It's nice hearing chip tune again. Okay, the kick sounds a little unruly at the moment. What we need to do is tame how long it plays for by using the K command to kill the trail the kick seems to be leaving. Right at the bottom of the command column, place command K00. He means here. So we go and uh, press and hold A and then go left or right till we hit K and then a value zero zero you'll probably find it's best to put it at the second to last row on the column to avoid clicking press play again and you'll hear it eradicated the noisy trail and you're left with a loud punchy kick drum and bass combo <laughs> Okay, so something that I'm <laughs> having a little bit of an issue with this tutorial is, is that it says at the bottom of the command column, place the K command to kill, right? But the thing is, if we press start, like we'll visually see how long the sound plays for and it plays to A. It doesn't even get down to E or to F. So to make it a really punchy kick, let's try on five. Eight. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, let's let's go for eight. <clears throat> All right. So that's your kick drum sorted out on that phrase. All you need to do is make sure the kicks are present on each phrase that you're using. Once you've done this, head back to the song screen and press start to hear the kick drum, bass line, and melody in action. This means that we have to physically add in a kick to the other three phrases in pulse one channel phrase zero one zero two zero three zero four so zero two select right put it in there bam 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 okay zero three bam 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 and four bam 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 Emerald Lagasse, bam. All right, now we're back on the song screen. Now we're gonna hear beautiful, beautiful music. <laughs> That's the stuff. Mm. <laughs> Uh, please note that this isn't the definitive method of creating a kick drum using the pulse channel. The technique here is a carbon copy of one posted on the LSDJ wiki where there are other examples you can follow. Okay, last thing we're going to do is percussion instruments, the snare drum and hi-hats. So percussion instruments are instruments that make sound when you hit them. If the instrument, like only makes a sound if you hit it technically is a percussion instrument in my opinion <laughs> so uh technically to me right you know okay all right create a new chain in the noise channel so we're gonna go all the way to noise and we have zero one zero two we're gonna have to drop down to zero three okay so i'm holding a and i'm just pressing right until we get to zero three all right, don't worry, just double tap A and create a new chain. Okay, well, we already got there. Go into your new chain and create a new phrase. Go into this phrase and place notes on rows four and C. This is going to be your snare drum, so make sure these notes are assigned to a new instrument number. Then go into the instrument screen for it. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna make a new phrase bam six we're gonna go into this into notes and we're going to drop it like it's hot on row four and row c now this is instrument zero zero which is our bass instrument which is not what we're going to be using so we're gonna have to change this instrument number not to one because that's our lead not to two because that's our kick but we're gonna set it to three Okay, now we're gonna go into the instrument screen. We're gonna highlight instrument 03. We're going to press and hold select and press right. Bam. Okay, this is where we're gonna mess around a little bit. Okay, so for type, there's pulse, wave, and noise. Uh, something my friend Mike Bleeds does is that he'll actually use instruments from a different channel. So he'll put like wave instruments inside the pulse channel by just changing the, the instrument type he's come up with some pretty cool stuff there's lots of weird effects going on with that but they sound dope okay in the instrument screen we need to make sure we are using a noise instrument and not a pulse wave or kit which we have done by changing the type by holding a and pressing left or right to get to where we need to go once you've done this name the instrument snare press play to hear what you're altering whilst you edit the envelope to around C3. Change the length to something that sounds snappy and finally edit the sweep until the notes start to resemble a snare sound. E, F usually works fine, so try that. So something snappy, maybe like this is a snare so d5 d4 and then 
It said sweep. <laughs> I think maybe was he trying to say shape? Did that is that what he meant? I think that's what he was trying to mean. Yeah, okay, shape. Go back to your phrase screen, create a new instrument, add these notes before and after each of the snares, and experiment inside the instrument screen. Remember to name your instrument hat. So we can put these before and after it says, right? So what I like to do, okay, so we're making a new instrument. So these are hi-hats. It just says name it hat, but I like hi and then HT or hot <laughs> H I H A T. So we can actually spell hi hat here. Hi hats are supposed to sound like hi hats, okay? So I'm gonna drop it with the an E2 on here, and then I'm just gonna kind of spread these around. This is not my proudest moment. <laughs> E1. Sounds, sounds better. Yeah. You don't really need to alter the length or the sweep parameters of the instrument. So length and then shape. Try changing a few of the phrases in the chain and adding new percussion patterns. Once you've got it sounding how you want, navigate to the song screen and hit start to hear your kick drum, bass line, lead melody, snare, and hi-hat all working in perfect harmony. So what I'm going to do to mix it up a little bit, we're going to place these here and then we're going to clone. So hold select, press B, press A, go down. Hold select, press B, press A, go down, hold select, press B, press A. And then I'm going to actually remove a couple of these hi-hats. And how you delete notes is you hold B and then you tap A and that removes the note. Okay, this is not going to sound amazing, but. Dude, that's not, that's a song by itself. Hmm. This is good, this is good. Going back out. So we're going to see how this all works. Okay, by now, you should have enough basic knowledge and understanding to create chains, phrases, and instruments in LSDJ and use these to construct a simple song. Again, remember to read the LSDJ manual and check the LSDJ wiki slash mailing list for advanced techniques and anything at all you're not sure of. Signed, Saber Pulse. Saber Pulse, thank you so much. I actually, when I first started using LSDJ, I used the Saber Pulse tutorial to kind of get my feet, to kind of get up and start crawling around, you know? But um, after doing this tutorial again, in terms of like actually doing the full tutorial, it sounds sick. I like it. Okay. Anyways, uh, this is Anthony from Om Nom Nom. Uh, will work for ice and my anime podcast and this has been the saber pulse lsdj tutorial but anyways i uh, hope you learned something new and keep on making chip to music folks it'll be great i will be doing some composing on the twitch channel my anime podcast so twitch.tv slash my anime podcast i do streaming of games i will be streaming composition sessions coming in the near future so we'll see what's good okay anyways thank you so much for watching and i'll catch y'all next time
All right, peace.